Good morning everyone. This is interesting happy chat again and let us continue to read Focus by Jurgen Wolf. Okay, this is the power of targeted thinking. Now we are on page 22 and I will just repeat what the, the last uh, paragraph I read the last time. So it says here, we need not only a strategy for reaching a goal, we also need a strategy for making sure that we follow through with our own strategy. As I said above, or as I said the last, um, last time, the only way you can fa fail is if you stop, but often we do stop implementing the strategy. As soon as you notice that happening, you can implement plan B. Okay, so the first one, I think this is uh, how you implement plan B. So the first one is decide whether you stopped because it wasn't working after you'd given it a fair trial. If yes, then it's time to brainstorm a new strategy and implement that one. The same is true if you stopped because whatever you were doing is too hard to implement. For example, Maybe you resolve to go to the gym seven days a week, but you're finding that this isn't realistic. You could decide that you'll go three days a week and see how that works. Second, if you stopped just because you forgot or it was inconvenient or you got lazy, then it's time to brainstorm a strategy for how you can make it easier, more pleasant and more likely to be on your mind. In our example, this could be by finding a workout buddy, or hiring a personal trainer, or promising to give your teenager a sum of money every time you miss your appointment at the gym. It's like you, you're going to give yourself a penalty. Okay. By considering a temporary failure as just a step toward eventual success, you remove its stigma. If you find this difficult, Take an inventory of the skills you have now in every part of your life. Then consider how many missteps or learning experiences you had on the way to mastering these skills. Most likely, you will have to think hard because once we reach a goal, we tend to forget the obstacles we overcame in the process. That will also be the case when you have reached the goals that may at the moment seem distant. You can't focus on what you don't see. Okay, so I'll repeat. You can't focus on what you don't see. Studies have shown that you are likely to snack more when sweets are in a transparent container than in an opaque one. And when the container is within easy reach, then when you have to get up to get it or to get to it. These results are not exactly earth-shaking, but they do remind us of an important principle, namely out of sight, out of mind, as well as in sight, in mind. If you want to be sure to spend time every day working on something that is important to you, keep a symbol of it visible or audible. This could be a photo or drawing, a word or a phrase, or a piece of music. It helps to change the symbol periodically to refresh its power to remind you to take action. This one's very interesting. Time to focus on your top three goals. With this understanding of how goal setting really works, you're ready to set your own top goals. Look back at your 80-20 lists. So if you have done, if you did the uh, um, 80 20 list, I mean, um, look back there, okay, get your list. Give some thought to what goals you would find most exciting and fulfilling, and then write down the three that you would most like to achieve. Okay, so in this book, it has a list of goal, first goal, second goal, and third goal. Which of these are you ready to commit to? Starting right now, you can choose one, two, or all of three. If you can tell that doing all three would be extremely time-consuming, then 
start with just one or two. Succeeding at one will give you greater energy and satisfaction than struggling to achieve three at the same time. If you do want to go for more than one, it helps if they're not all in the same sector of your life. For instance, you might choose one goal that relates to your career, one that relates to fitness and health, and one that is about improving an important relationship. For each of the goals, get a nice notebook that you will enjoy writing in. You can use the blanks and forms in this book, but you also want more space to record all the actions you take, the milestones you pass, the strategies that work really well, and that you can apply in the future to other goals and so on. So it's very important if you're reading a book like this one, you need a pen and a notebook or a paper. You need to jot down all the important details and also the activities. Okay, so I think I've read this book already because I have a note here. The next phrase is very important. So it says here, start with these questions. For the goal that you consider most important, answer the questions below. For our examples, let's say that you realize in your 80-20 evaluation that you make the most money doing design work. But your lack of expertise in using the Photoshop software program is holding you back. One of your goals could be to acquire those skills. So first, identify what the situation is like now. Be as specific as possible. Example, I bought Photoshop instructional DVDs but have never used them. Okay. Second, what did you do or not do that is responsible for how the situation is now? Example, I never schedule time to learn the program. Third, what will you do differently in order to, give, uh, to get the outcome you want? Example, I will spend four hours a week learning the program. Okay, so they give uh, their own example. So it's up to you. What is your goal? Uh, or what, how can you relate to this book? And the fourth, what do you need to have or do in order to be sure that you can actually do what you have specified in the previous step? Example, I have to decide what I'm doing for four hours a week, currently that I will replace with four hours of learning. The fifth, what resources? Um, the resources could be time, money, or help from others. Do you need? Okay, so what resources do you need? Same like time, money, help from others. How will you get them? Is there anything you need to give up or stop doing in order to free these resources? For example, the resource I need is time. So I will cut back by four hours a week or watching TV. I also need to put in place a system that reminds me to do the lessons. Okay, so this is actually planning. Sixth, do the different things and conduct an ongoing evaluation of whether they are working. If not, consider what you might do differently to get the results you want. Keep doing this until you have reached the goal. For example, if you find yourself consistently unable to spend four focused hours at home learning the program, you might want to consider taking your laptop to a library or other place where you won't be interrupted. Or, you may find that self-instruction doesn't work so, so well for you and that it would be better to do a course. If you want to commit to more than one goal, answer the same questions for each one. So I gave you all the uh, um, questions and you ask yourself those questions and you can also replay if you want to or if you need to. Rev up your passion with a top 10 list. Particularly if your goal is an ambitious one, you may feel daunted by the prospect of starting to aim for it. Maybe you're familiar with talk show host David Letterman's top 10 list. You can adapt it to get, to get your, um, yourself off to a rousing start. Make up a list of the top 10 reasons why you believe each goal is important to your future. I haven't done this yet. So, it 
it says here, make up a list of the top 10 reasons why you believe each goal is important to your future or why you really want to achieve it. This list will help motivate you if you run out of steam along the way. It can even be useful to make up the top 10 posters to display in your office or meeting room. So remind yourself of these key motivations. Try this now for one of your goals. Top 10 reasons I want to achieve this goal. So they have top 10, but 10 is the first uh, list in here. So it's like, it's like 10, 9, 8, 7, and the first one. From 10 to 1. It's like counting down. But if, you're fine, if you find your motivation faltering, put your top 10 list on a slip of paper and carry it with you in your wallet or purse and review it frequently. It may also be a useful antidote to the, to the ease with, each, with which other people come up with reasons why your goal will be hard to reach. Most people's default setting is negativity, so being ready to counter it will help you. Hmm. See yourself as the hero you are. Another great way to gain confidence in your ability to reach your goal is using the hero's journey as a template for your actions. The idea of the hero's journey stems from the work of Joseph Campbell, who was one of the world's foremost students of mythology. He found that in many cultures, there were myths that had basically the same structure, a hero going on a quest. Along the way, the hero finds a mentor, but the mentor can go along for only part of the journey, and then the hero has to proceed alone. He faces various tests and challenges and goes deeply into the world of his adventure. At some point, he confronts the greatest challenge and may despair of succeeding or even surviving. At this stage, he discovers a new strength or sense of purpose, and he goes on to triumph. Often, the treasure the hero wins is symbolic. That is, something real like a gem or a golden goblet that also represents some new knowledge or wisdom he has gained as a result of his journey. Sometimes this treasure benefits not, not only the hero, but also the people around him or even his whole tribe or country. If this pattern sounds familiar, that's not surprising because it, it's a story structure also used in many novels and films. George Lucas used it for his first three Star Wars movie and struck up a friendship with Campbell. Even more interesting though is that it's a pattern that fits many of our real life adventures. When I conduct my Create the Future workshop, I invite participants first to use this structure to describe how they have handled a challenge in the past. For example, going to college, starting a career, or learning a new skill. Often, people are surprised to realize they've been heroes. Then I ask them to use this structure to describe how they could accomplish something they haven't done yet. The result is always interesting and sometimes profound. Not only is the hero's journey a useful planning tool, but the effect of thinking of ourselves as heroes and heroines in a journey of adventure can have a fantastic motivational effect. Switching from I have a problem or even I have a goal to I am on a quest is a big shift. Try it yourself with one of your big goals. Fill in the blanks below and whenever you're not sure what the answer is, just take a guess. If you relax and let answers come to you, you may be surprised that your subconscious mind offers up more about this journey than you knew you knew. Okay, so I'm going to, I will read the next part on my next uh, reading plan. So that's all for now. And Hindi na nga po, dito po nagtatapos ang ating uh, reading vlog, the fifth reading vlog. Okay, so this is my fifth reading vlog and uh, before I end it, um, I want to uh, shout out, make a shout out to um, uh, anak, Daisy Team, Marako, ayan si 
si anak Daisy Roto. Uh, shout out sa iyo sa iyong bapag comment sa aking third video vlog. And Rivas ko, yan, for watching my video vlog. Also, to Proud of Dobro si Nanay, thank you po sa iyong love at sa pag-support mo po sa aking channel. Miss Steph, at, um, from, uh, so she's from Boss B TV. Thank you so much. Also to Black Mamba. Thank you so much. Galing din po siya kay um, Boss, Boss B. Um, also, thank you to Young Steve Vlog and Keep Rocks na laging andyan po sa aking comment box. Thank you so much po for uh, taking your time watching, reading, and listening to my reading vlog. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ganun din sa Timore and to my um, kapatid. My kapatid din yung din. Uh, kapatid yung nao sa vlog. Aking baby. Best friend. Uh, best friend. <laughs> best friend uh, Ernesto Makawidi. Ganun din po ang um, lahat ng teams. And ganun din po ang Timore. Si Silay. Uh, Press Hamgitismo. Bunso, Chenis, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you rin po sa lahat ng sumusubaybay sa aking viewers at subscribers. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. And um, an interesting hobby chat. And may, may God bless you all. Bye!